Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, let's talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. So we've talked about light, about the sources of light, how it all works. Now I wanna dig into light a little bit more. Now this is gonna be another one of those concepts that uh, it's just purely conceptual, right? So not something that we have to be thinking about every single day, but there's a couple little tidbits in here that I want you to know. Uh, because when it comes to product knowledge and understanding how, let's say, for example, uh, how sunglasses work and what kind of things that they block, blocking UV or blue blocker lenses, right? Blocking a certain wavelength of light. So this is all kind of linked to the, to the electromagnetic, spe the electromagnetic spectrum, my apologies. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't want us to get too overwhelmed with the physics of light and exactly, uh, you know, all the minutiae of this. However, it is kind of, there are some tidbits in here that are important. So we'll touch on those and then we're gonna get in and get out and move on to some more stuff. So first of all, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum comprises all electromagnetic radiation from low frequency radio waves to extremely high frequency gamma rays. So <clears throat> I want you to think of this concept of the let's call it emr electromagnetic radiation or the ems electromagnetic uh, spectrum all of these different waves uh have different properties right so radio waves are also obviously quite different than light and gamma rays come from space uh and these have their own properties based on the exact wavelength uh and the frequency and the energy of that radiation all right so we think of light as the visible portion of that ems okay and this consists of electromagnetic ra radiation ranging from 380 to 760 nanometers now this is a bit of like a buzz not buzz word but buzz numbers these are things that we should have a good idea of what the visible light spectrum what range uh in nanometers so that falls in do you have to know this 100% by heart? No, not necessarily, but you should have a pretty good understanding of that general range, okay? And this is what comprise the stuff we see, the light that we're able to, you know, discern with our eyes falls, the wavelengths of that radiation falls within that range, okay? So uh, white light is comprised of all the wavelengths in that spectrum, okay? And then individual wavelengths within the visible spectrum by themselves create different color sensations to the visual system, okay? So maybe we should take a look at the electromagnetic spectrum, all right? So you're gonna see here, there's quite a bit going on on here. Uh, and I'm just gonna start kind of labeling this diagram a little bit so we understand exactly what's going on. So you're gonna notice that the wavelengths here, they get from big, so long wavelengths to shorter wavelengths, all right? So, and you could see by the curves, the frequency, okay, or the, distance between the crests gets smaller and smaller as you go to the left now as that's happening energy increases okay now i want you to keep in mind that energy <clears throat> is proportional to how harmful the light is so over here we're going to start labeling this we have all the different types of wavelengths that fall within this, all right? So you'll notice that on the extreme right, you have radio waves here, and then you have microwaves and you have infrared. These things are all considered to be completely harmless to living organisms and to tissue. Then we have this block here, which is our visible light spectrum, and that is that 380 to 760. Now, as you start keep, as you keep going to the left, you're gonna notice things like ultraviolet light, and then you're gonna notice X-rays and gamma rays. These guys are all harmful, all right? So, and why is this important? Well, it's, it's kind of important to understand the general idea that the wavelength and the type of properties that light has, or, or rather not just light, because these aren't all 
forms of light, but rather forms of radiation, they have an impact on the physical, physical properties of that particular radiation. And it also has an impact on how it affects us, right? So again, remember that this portion here, visible light, falls between 780 and 760. But within that, all the different colors that we experience have different wavelengths of light. Now, we could show this, right? So you'll notice here I have a whole bunch of ranges and a whole bunch of different colors. Now, you don't have to memorize this. There's really no use to it. However, understanding how this breaks down is actually pretty interesting. So I'm actually going to start at the bottom. You'll notice here that the 620 to 760 is red and then so on and so forth. You get orange, yellow, green, blue. I want you to notice something here because I'm sure if you've been working in the field, you've heard a couple things here. First of all, you should be aware that ultraviolet light is bad news. Okay, and there's UVA, UVB, UVC, all falling within those that range of wavelengths. And notice how they're low wavelengths. Remember, low wavelength equals high energy equals bad news. But notice here how violet and blue, okay, fall in the lower wavelength areas. So blue light, you know, it's been well documented lately that blue light can be harmful. And it depends who you ask, it depends on the literature you read. And I don't want to get into it as far as whether or not blue light is really as bad as everyone says it is. This isn't really what we want to talk about at this point. However, it does stand to reason that you can understand why blue light could be harmful because on the range or on the scale of electromagnetic radiation, it is lower wavelength and therefore higher energy. And it's pretty darn close to ultraviolet light, right? As far as the wavelengths go. So it would stand to reason that blue and violet do, it does make sense that because they're higher energy light, uh, can contribute to more tissue damage and create problems for us human beings, right? So another thing that blue light is often called is high energy visible light. So you're going to see HEV sometimes, and that's why, because it is a shorter wavelength light. Uh, it's still part of the visible light spectrum. However, it borders on ultraviolet. So uh, it does stand to reason that it can be harmful. So that's really all you need to know about the electromagnetic spectrum is that there's a whole bunch of different types of radiation out there that have different properties from radio waves to microwaves all the way to harmful gamma rays. And then we fall, not we, but the, the light that we use falls somewhere in the middle. It's not harmful and it actually has the properties of displaying visual information, right? We have white light that comprises 380 to 716 and you have all the different wavelengths within that that give you different color sensations. And then we have a bit of an idea of where this whole blue light concept comes from as well, being a little bit of a higher energy portion of the visible light spectrum. Outside of this, uh, you know, the rest of it isn't as important as the stuff we're going to cover in future lectures. If this is all you remember about the electromagnetic spectrum, this is enough because, you know, this is actually more than most people kind of like delve into it. So why don't we just, you know, talk significance, as we always do, uh, light is key to everything in optician, right? So we've already talked about, you know, the sources of light, the fact that reflecting, you know, you have your primary source that illuminates, primary, primary luminous source, and then all the objects within our environment that are visible, they are the secondary because they are reflecting, reflecting, <laughs> reflecting or absorbing different wavelengths of light that give you those different color sensations and different properties that allow you to see them with your eyes. Um, focus on the visible light spectrum, right? We don't need to worry so much about the details of all of the other types of electromagnetic radiation. Maybe, you know, understand the relationship between wavelength and blue light and UV light. However, focus on the visible light spectrum because ultimately that's what we deal with, right? UV, blue light, and other higher energy wavelengths, right? Again, we're just reiterating this, is that these are the other, other than the visible light spectrum, these are, the two primarily that we deal with that you know are considered harmful just understand that you know you could understand it this way like shorter sorry longer uh, sorry yes shorter wavelength right L wavelength is lambda like this shorter wavelength equals higher energy and even that is not that important other than understanding this part higher energy equals more harmful right as simple as that. And that's pretty much it.
All right, why don't we move on?